In this video, I will be explaining what you need to buy and not buy to make a slimline pen and how to use CA glue to make this glass-like professional finish. If you'd like to see how to make this cane, you can check out the previous video called Rainbow Pixel Cane. The minimum equipment you'll need is a slimline pen kit, a clamp or a vise, sandpaper, two smooth hard surfaces, and a quarter inch rod. There's also some, some nice to have equipment. And finally, if you really want to do a lot of this, there's some make it easier equipment. First up, let's cover some basic terms in pen making. A pen kit is the tubes, hardware, and refill necessary to make a pen. You'll cover the brass tube with clay to personalize your pen kit. Bushings are these round pieces of metal. They're customized for each type of pen kit. You only need one set for each type of kit you own. Or if you're me and prone to losing things, you might want to get two sets. A pen press is a specialized clamp that makes it easier to put pens together. CA means cyanoacrylate. It's a generic term for glues like super glue, which is a specific brand of CA glue, so is Loctite. First, reduce your cane to a size where you can fit four across on your pen barrel. If you would like to see the whole cane reduction, I have all of the unmodified footage uploaded to my YouTube channel in a playlist called Raw, as in raw footage. I'm using a slimline kit for this, which you can get at any pen kit place. Just Google slimline pen kit. I got this kit from Exotic Blanks and they are less than $2 per kit. Your cane should be long enough to cover each barrel and about 1.5 centimeters across. It's better to make it just a little bit smaller than a little bit bigger, since you can always stretch and pull the cane slices to close a gap, but it's harder to address having excess clay. And if you'd rather see how to do this with a triangular cane, there's a video on my YouTube channel, Motley Clay, that shows how. If you're using a triangle cane, you'll need your cane to be about seven millimeters on each side. To cut even width slices, use a thin blade and pull it taut between your fingers. Thin blades are flexible, and by pulling it, you will prevent it from bowing and making your slices uneven in the middle. Line up the four slices on a piece of wax deli paper, and then curve that paper around to apply them to your pen barrel. If you have trouble getting your slices to stick to your barrel, use a bit of liquid clay or bacon bond on the barrel first. Use your fingers to adhere all the slices well to the barrel and start closing any gaps between the slices. Don't worry about your fingerprints right now, we'll be rolling it later to take care of those. If you don't do this step, you'll risk having the slices pop off when you're rolling it. Now we're gonna roll it. It's very critical not to use your hands for this as you don't want to introduce any uneven areas. I'm using a lentil bead maker here on the top, but you can use anything smooth and flat for both sides. I switch the direction of the barrel back and forth while rolling to make sure that if my hands are putting more pressure on one side than the other, it evens out over time. This smoothing is a technique I learned from Fiona Abel Smith. Using a knitting needle or other similar cylinder, gently close seams that haven't already been closed by the rolling. I usually use a very bright light and get very close so I can see any place where there's still a visible line. Then I roll some more to get out any uneven areas that I caused by doing my seam closing. You can see how I pick it up for baking using a metal rod so my fingers never touch the smoothed barrel. After your barrel is baked, you will want to sand it. I always wet sand to keep down how much sanding dust gets around. First, I sand the edges, checking repeatedly to make sure I'm sanding them flat all around. If you don't do this, then your pen will have a gap between the barrel and the end when you reassemble it. My pen is very smooth already from the rolling, so I'm starting with 320 grit, which you could go straight to 400 too. I'm using Abernet because that's what I use on my lathe, but you could just as easily use regular sandpaper. You can buy pre-cut sheets of Abernet, but since I use so much of it, I've actually bought these rolls and cut what I need off them. When you're sanding the barrel, it's important to make sure that you cover every part of it approximately the same amount of time and that you sand in both directions, back and forth as well as round and round. If you don't, you can end up with grooves from the sandpaper. I'm taking longer to sand these barrels because I'm using the bushings to judge how far down to sand the ends of the pen. The bushings will let you see how much more you need to sand. You can use any quarter inch rod to check your bushings against your barrel, including a knitting needle, US 10.5 or UK size 3. Next, use 400 grit sandpaper to smooth the finish further. Don't forget to give as much sanding attention to your sloped ends as you do to the rest of the barrel so they don't have visible scratches. You can stop sanding at this point and assemble your pen, or you can go on to use Micromesh and also CA glue. When I work on a lathe, I don't use any Micromesh before applying my CA. I assume my hand sanding probably wasn't as good as it is on the lathe, so I decided to play it safe and do the first two Micromesh pads before applying my CA. Let's discuss CA briefly. CA means cyanoacrylate. Cheaper glues use poor activators that can cause cracking, blooming, and yellowing either immediately or over time. You also want to find one formulated to rely on an accelerator so it will stay liquid for a while and make it easier to apply smoothly. My favorite CA brand for my lathe is Mercury Flex, but I saw a YouTube video of someone applying a CA called Glue Boost by hand, so I bought some to see if we could also use it to get glossy polymer clay pens without using a lathe. I will include links in the video description, but make sure you buy all three. Fill and finish, fill and finish thin, and the glue dry accelerator. The most important thing for you to do is to read up on safety. 
Just like resin, CA glue puts off fumes that are harmful. Some folks work with it unfiltered for years, not having problems. Other people have a reaction to it on the first day or after a bit of time after a number of exposures. I've chosen to use a respirator, goggles, and gloves, but I'm not your doctor or a safety expert, so please read up on it and make the right choices for you and your health. You'll need a way to have access to all sides of your pen barrel without touching it or having it touch any surface. If you have a threaded mandrel like this one from Penn State Industries, you can use it, but you can also make do with any width rod and some masking tape to make one end starting thin and then tapering up to thick enough so the barrel will slide over the thinner part and then get firmly stuck on the thicker part. You will also need a work surface. I'm just using a thin deli plastic sheet here. And you'll need some way to keep the CA glue off your finger. You can use masking tape, plastic stretched over your hand, or my favorite, the small Ziploc bags that your pen kit pieces come in. I'm going to do two coats of regular glue boost and then two coats of thin. I'm not going to speed up any of this footage because this is the most critical part of the process. Feel free to skip ahead in the video if you don't want to watch it. If you can't even smooth your finger across the whole pen barrel before it gets tacky, you didn't put on enough CA in that coat. Like me. Don't count this as one of your coats and just use more the next time and count that as your coat. In between each coat, you want to give it a couple of quick sprays of accelerator. Pfft, pfft. Glue Boost Accelerator only comes in an aerosol version, so I'm spraying off camera into a paper bag to avoid getting accelerator on everything around me. At this point, I rotate the Ziploc bag 180 degrees to do the thin glue. You likely got CA glue on something while doing this, even if it's just the rod you used. Acetone will dissolve it, but it's also not very nice to your fingers, so use gloves when applying it. Many, but not all, nail polish removers have acetone in them. You can get acetone online or in drugstores. It's possible to accidentally crack your clay when trying to separate it from the masking tape, and this happens on lathes too. If so, you can repair it with more CA, but to avoid cracking, use a sharp blade to score the CA away from your pen barrel and encourage it to break there rather than on your barrel. Use non-stick bushings, though note that they're not actually non-stick, they're more less stick, or use a wax on your masking tape or bushings before applying the CA. I suspect Renaissance wax will work if you have some from your other projects, but I usually use some car wax. Even if you use wax, you will likely need to use acetone at least sometimes. The point of the wax is just to encourage it to come off the bushings rather than coming off your pen. As before, we start sanding by sanding down the ends, this time being careful not to sand so vigorously that we crack the CA right off the barrel. Then you want to sand again with 320 grit, but this time around you're going to be watching for sparklies. To do this, periodically stop sanding, dry your pen barrel, and turn it back and forth slowly in a bright light to see if there's any sparkles. Those sparkly shiny bits are unsanded CA, which means there's spots where the CA isn't smooth enough with all the CA around it. So if you don't sand it down, you will have a bumpy barrel you need to get rid of most of the sparklies. Once you've gotten most of those sparklies sanded away, switch to 400 grit and sand all surfaces again. Make sure to get the two ends where they pinch in towards the pen hardware so they aren't rougher than the rest of the pen. Just like before, it's important to sand back and forth and round and round both. You don't want to leave any grooves in the pen barrel from going in only one direction. Now sand through all the grits of Micromesh. Finally, I'm going to use some Novus Number no. 1 plastic polish. I have this because it's easy to apply on a Fordham or a lathe when I'm finishing my pen barrels there, but it does work by hand. You could also use any of your normal buffing methods. Be careful if you're using something like Renaissance wax or other wax finishes on the pen barrel. They feel nice, but since pens are meant to be handled frequently, they will rub off pretty quickly. And here you go. A completely hand finished, no power tools involved, glass-like professional finish on a pen. Next we're going to actually assemble the pen kit. Every different type of pen kit is assembled differently. Always familiarize yourself with a new type of kit and take your time. You don't want to go through all that effort to make your pen, only to mess up on the final few steps. 
I like to start by laying out my pieces and making sure I have everything identified and in order before starting. A slimline kit has two barrels, so decide if you want them facing the same direction or mirrored, and if mirrored, which side you want in the middle. One secret of pen making is that the pen clip will cover one flaw for you for free. In this case, I had a small bit of clay that chipped off the end of the barrel, so I stuck it on the clip and no one will ever notice. The first step is to press the nib into one end of one barrel. The second step is to press the tube called the twist mechanism in. Note there's no actual limit to how far you can press it in, so you want to be careful. As I note in the directions, usually you go to the indentation, but you should stop a little short at first. There's no harm in pressing it in in stages and testing at each stage. Insert the ink nuff when it's twisted. If you press it in too far, the nib will never fully retract, so be careful. This is probably the worst clamp I could have chosen for this step, but it's what I had in front of me. Since it closes by twisting, it created small metal flakes all over my work surface and made the tip of the pen silver where the black enamel flaked off. But I wanted to show you how you could assemble a pen even without using a pen press. That said, I much prefer using my pen press, so I'm going to finish with the rest of the pen on the pen press. Next, the directions say to slide the band over the exposed mechanism. I forgot to do this step and did it later, but just noting that technically this is the next step. Next, press the cap and clip together onto the other pen barrel. Pay attention to which side is which. And finally, you can push your pen together by hand and twist it and verify that it works. There you go! You made a pen from a slimline pen kit with a professional glassy finish without using any power tools. As a reminder, if you want to make this cane, it's called the Rainbow Pixel Cane, and the video is on my YouTube channel, Motley Woods. This footage is from a different pen, but here you can see how its shininess compares with the non-CA options. Thanks so much for watching! Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I would love to hear in the comments if this has inspired you to decide to try making pens. I will try to answer any questions in the comments as quickly as I can.